The Earth 2 platform has been utilizing Mapbox since its inception, so stick around when we talk about Mapbox, its features, functionality, and limitations. What is up guys? Welcome back to the Bull Combo. I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we're going to be talking about all things Mapbox. But before we get started, if you want to support the channel in any way, you can do that just by using any of the support options listed down below in the description, or you can help out by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell to get notified when I post new content. Also, just a reminder, guys, that land giveaway number nine is now live, so if you have not entered that already, make sure to watch the video I posted earlier this week on the Earth2 blockchain and crypto move. The beginning of that video you'll see the winner of giveaway number eight and the entry details for giveaway number nine so make sure to enter that and get entered to win all right guys so let's talk Mapbox. so like i said Mapbox has been something that earth 2 has been built on since the start but i think there's a lot of unknowns and i think a lot of people don't really understand how Mapbox functions and i think understanding how Mapbox functions is really important to understanding how far Mapbox can take earth 2 and what earth 2 is going to need to be successful long term so first off, let's talk about what Mapbox is. So Mapbox is an API-based mapping tool, and it's used for UI, search, navigation, and third-party implementation. That's pretty broad spectrum, so let's dive in a little bit deeper. Mapbox is built on vector tiles, which are basically small pieces of data that allow for quick scalability. In short, you can create a really large map that loads very quickly. This is obviously really important when working with maps such as a map the size of the planet Earth. So it makes a lot of sense as to why Earth 2 went with Mapbox to begin with. That said, that's just an overview of Mapbox. Mapbox is actually an extremely powerful tool that has a lot of functionality and a lot of features built in. So let's explore those. So on top of being built on vector tiles, Mapbox adds the ability to customize or stylize a map. Anytime you're configuring a Mapbox integration, it's gonna require two documents, a vector tile specification, this controls the geospatial data that each vector tile represents. Then you also have the style specification. This basically controls what's drawn on the map in the order in which those things are drawn. So between those two documents, you can control the entire behavior of the Mapbox interface. So the vector tile specification, as it mentions, is literally the geospatial and geographical data that each of these tiles are gonna represent. Because there's so many different types of maps you can create, there's different types of geospatial and geographical data that that tile or those vector tiles can include. And so this document would be where you would customize or configure the type of data that those tiles are going to represent. Then you have the style specification. The style specification is going to be a little bit more fun because that's what you actually see. This is the data and the, this is the way that the maps are represented visually. Style specifications can be pretty much limitless. You can change the color of the map, the text of the map, the way the map boundaries display. So many different details about the map can be customized. It's clear Earth 2 did a specific customization here where they overlaid the grid and utilized a real world map, etc. But that's obviously just the tip of the iceberg for what Mapbox is capable of. As you can see from some images here, you can create some pretty elaborately customized maps within the Mapbox user interface. So while Earth 2 is utilizing it in one way, there's a lot of other ways that Mapbox can be utilized, configured, and ultimately stylized. Now, stylization includes a few different things. Obviously, it includes the colors, it includes the text and branding and stuff like that, but it also includes textures and modifiers and even buildings. So, from that perspective, Mapbox is very, very capable of rendering a high-end view or an above-ground view of what we currently know or own inside of Earth 2. And that is the reason why they are utilizing Mapbox currently, because in a lot of ways it makes so much sense for them to represent the grid utilizing this feature. So in addition to stylization features, Mapbox also incorporates search and navigation style features. I think we're all familiar with the search functionality, being able to search across the map, search that geospatial or that API data. We're already familiar with that because of the grid. Now we don't utilize navigation because there's no navigation feature inside of Earth 2, but if there was, Mapbox would support it, utilizing that same geospatial API data. So not only can you search for that information and search the map, but you can also have the map guide you via a navigation feature utilizing that same API geospatial data. Something we don't see in Earth 2, but an interesting functionality of Mapbox nonetheless. And then we have what's probably the most interesting part of Mapbox and the portion that probably is going to mean the most to us long term. And that is the ability to carry over geospatial or geographical API data and integrate with a third party 
platform, such as Unity. This is where the E2 team would be able to create a 3D world inside of a third party proprietary engine like Unity, but have that 3D world geographically or geospatially linked to information that's displayed within Mapbox. Basically giving you the ability to access your tiles and have them still be geographically linked to the tiles on the grid, but being viewed in a completely different platform or application, such as a proprietary engine inside of the Earth 2 game. So this is where Mapbox comes into the long-term game itself. The geospatial and geographic data, the location data, is always going to be stored at the Mapbox level. And integrating that to Unity will be key to carrying that information over and retaining that information in a 3D build world. So that's basically how they're going to do it, guys. They're going to take this geospatial API data from Mapbox and integrate it with their proprietary Unity-based engine so that when you zoom into this land and you're now at a ground level being able to build, you're still viewing and seeing that information properly geographically and geospatially linked from Mapbox. This is how we'll know the exact limits and dimensions of our plots and our properties, as well as how we might be able to see some of the information or data around us, property information around us, buildings, etc. All of that information is going to be pulled from Mapbox and then graphically represented inside of their engine. But this does highlight a few interesting things. First of all, it highlights the limitations of Mapbox. It's pretty clear that the game's not going to be played in Mapbox, and that Mapbox's main purpose will not only be the API data, but the user interface of the grid itself. And while they may update the map, change the view of the grid, even make it much more user friendly, give it a more appealing look, the underlying data is going to remain the same. And the limitations to which any sort of game can be played on the grid will still exist. So I think the most we're going to see from the grid from a game perspective is a three-dimensional land view, or at most, maybe a three-dimensional view of our specific property as well as what's placed on it. I'm not sure how Mapbox would integrate from that perspective. It can turn around and display stuff that was created in a third-party engine on the Mapbox UI. I don't know if that's something it's capable of, uh, but at the least we would be able to have a 3D terrain view and potentially a 3D land view. So again, this kind of highlights the limitations of Mapbox and how the game is obviously going to have to reside in something other than the Mapbox platform because Mapbox as a whole is really just relied on for geospatial and geographical data. There is a limitation to the user interface side of it or what you can see and experience from a Mapbox perspective. And while it's an extremely powerful tool and it's a vital tool that Earth 2 needs to use in order to implement this real world geographical data, it's not the platform where we're actually going to play the game. So I think it's important that we just get an understanding of Mapbox and that was kind of the purpose of this video. I know this is really a random freeform video, but I really just wanted to talk about how Mapbox works, what its functionalities are, and kind of outline how it can be used as well as the limitations of where it's not going to be used in the platform and kind of show what the long-term potential for Mapbox could be from an Earth 2 perspective, but how they'll also need to incorporate their own proprietary engine or third-party engine in order to bring this vision to life. If you guys have any questions on this, make sure to comment down below. I'm not a Mapbox pro, but I'll do my best to answer the questions the best I can. I'm curious on your opinions on this. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this down below. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button so that you can see when I post new content. I want to thank you guys for checking out this video. As always, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and until next time, we'll see you soon.